All righty then. So today we have with us our special guest. We have the legendary Trinier. Yeah. And <laughs> for those of you wondering, like, you know, what's, what's going on? What, why this hardened, hard, old school, legendary channel has this beautiful lady on today? And it's because she is legendary. She yeah. is powerful. Mm -hmm. And she is what we are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight up. Old school. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. And just to give them a quick, quick, quick breakdown. All right. Trinia has that song, that freestyle song, All I Ever Need. I'll be all you ever need. I'll be all you ever need. Yeah. Ooh. I'll be all you ever need. Um, they're playing our song. They're playing our song. And all night, I know mm. you love me. Mm. The list goes on. I have quite all, a few. <laughs> all, all, all legendary songs, by the way. And the uh -huh. reason why this is so so relevant to this page is because, right, mm -hmm. you have no idea how popular the freestyle genre is in the prison. Let me tell you something. I didn't expect you to say that. <laughs> yeah. In the prisons. Now, let me tell you. Right now, somewhere, sometimes, somebody's getting stabbed up because they didn't return a freestyle tape. Oh. <laughs> 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 now, you are so now, crazy. Y'all listen. They a lot of people in them yards, they listen to that music and, and, yeah. it's, and it's hard body. And and it's, it doesn't look like a club, like you know, when you're performing and you know, you look over and you see people dancing. It's kind of like the village people in the prison yard. Mm -hmm. So it's a sight. But I get it, I get it, because um, you know, out here in LA, I'm well, I'm in Vegas now, but I'm huge in Los Angeles. And you know, in Los Angeles, a lot of gangs, um, huge uh, Latino community, uh, a lot of Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been told that, you know, like you're our Chicano queen and we mm -hmm. love you. And, and so I could see that. I could see where I could be popular there too, because I have a huge I have a huge gang following. <laughs> in, Yo, let me in, tell in, you, in LA is is very is very very true. You know, let me tell you, and not to be disrespectful, there's mm -hmm. people that's locked up since freestyle was first in its prime. Yeah, and they're still there. Yeah. So in their minds, like freestyle is it, and I don't know if you know, but like they have like this cassettes is yeah. what you play over there. Like you don't have CDs or you know, people people make weapons out of things like that. But they have like these cassettes and they got like these distributors that they distribute cassettes and like tapes is everything, yeah. you know? But yeah. anyway, another reason why why freestyle artists is, is relevant, especially you, is because you're from Buffalo, New York. Where do you get that from? Ah, you see? Uh, I'm not from Buffalo. I'm from you're Miami. Not? Oh, you're from Miami. But I lived in Buffalo. Oh, I lived okay. in Buffalo for... A very short time, but I'm born and raised in Miami, raised my son in Miami. Okay. And uh, I've made a few moves. I, you know, divorced and uh, moved to Atlanta for a time. And then in 2013, I moved to Los Angeles. And now I, I just moved to um, Vegas back in July. But for a very short time in my young years, um, I dropped out of college. I was at the University of Miami Music School. I dropped out and I moved to Buffalo for a short time to sing with Rick James and the yes. Mary Jane Girls. So that's what we that's what I was getting at with this Buffalo. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> because I know Rick James is from Buffalo and I wanted to see what was the relation. Yes, that's the relation. I um it's so crazy. I I went to Rick James used to be, when I was a young kid, I was a fanatic for Rick James and the Stone City Band. Mm. Some people loved Prince because it was kind of back then a, a competition thing with Prince and Rick James. And, I always thought uh, it was Prince and Michael Jackson, man, not for nothing, but go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, it was Prince and Rick. They had a little okay. thing going and um, I loved Prince as well, but I was more into funk. I was more into mm. um, that real, you know, 
Rick James mm. hardcore funk. But you know, not to cut you off, but it's okay. one thing about Rick James is that he got the funk, the rock, the pop. It's like every, it's like no, no genre. You know, yeah, no, like pin to this guy, man. But go ahead, yeah, man. I just yeah, get and and so does Prince. Man. Now you know Prince has the rock going on. The you know, um, I want to be your lover and country fancy. All of that he has, all of that mm -hmm. going on. I love them both, but mm -hmm. for me, Rick James was everything. I just, I and you know, I just, I like bad boys. And to me, mm -hmm. Prince was a little shorty. He just was not my speed, right? So um, I went to the concert when I was uh, Hold on, hold years. on, one second, one second. Let's touch on that. You said <laughs> Prince was a little shorty. Yeah. All right, now, now, does it really, really matter, like height? You know what I mean? Like For me, it does, yeah. Like, okay, a billionaire right now. Let's say a billionaire, like I got 20 billion and I'm two feet tall. Would you smash? No, I can't do it. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I would have to figure out how to work around it, though. Maybe. I don't know. I, I've never been. Uh, <laughs> work <I> around it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like stilettos? Like a, what? Oh. Nike shoe boxes stacked up? Like. Hey, I don't know. Because, you know, I, I've, been, I've been in the presence and have dated very, very, very rich men. And I've never been. Uh, that woman to just chase after the money. There has to be something there that really keeps me other than the money. Mm. I have to be either totally turned on by you, just flabbergasted. It has to be something that really clicks with me on the inside. I just mm. can't, I, you can only fake it for so long. And mm. I, I can't live that kind of life. And you know, mm. usually men with money like that, they have a certain, um, control factor about them when it comes mm. to their women. They love to be the one calling the that's shots. Right. The and that's right, and, the bosses. And I'm totally, I, I don't like that because I like to be in control of myself. I'm very independent. And I've always been like that since I was a young woman. I would, I've dated, if I name some of the names of people that I've dated that's rich and still yeah. relevant today, mm. it would blow your mind. Mm. But I had- Give I, us I one, give us one, give us one. Okay. Give us um, Eddie Murphy. Ooh, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Magic no. Johnson. There's quite oh, a few. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, no. I got I to gotta gain control here because this is legendary stuff right here. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but I've never been back to the, I've never been one to, all right, all right. to do out, that. Out of, out of the richest men that you've dated that are celebrities, mm -hmm. which one would you say? is the bad boy like that one that you was like mm, wait a minute this one right here ain't nothing to play with i would say for the time that i it, it, for that era it was it was probably eddie murphy wow it, it was eddie murphy because that was back in the 80s you know right right right, right. so back then that's when he was very relevant yeah yeah and so and was eddie's magic, no joke so was this magic why johnson person yeah yeah, and so is magic, and and it's it's a, a few others I don't want to name, but okay. <laughs> but Amen. the point was, I, I you know there has to be more to the person with me, and these men are a lot of a lot of them are very controlling, and I just I just feel more safe and secure and having my own, and my father always raised me that way. Have your own, have your own. Don't depend on a man. Don't wait on a guy to do this. Have your own shit. <laughs> that oh, was my nah. dad. <laughs> I, I see the way you move. You're real diva-ish, believe me. You, yeah. you, you own you. Yeah, you know? yeah, everything you see is me. I don't, um, you I don't have you. managed, oh, yeah. I don't have managed men. I don't have, and I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm looking into maybe changing up some things, but mm. I've stayed relevant basically because of my hustle, because of me, I don't have publicists. I don't have managers. I don't have sponsors, mm. you know, paying for this, paying for that, mm. trying to, you know, help me out with buying posters and buying this. I do everything myself. Mm. So I, and maybe gotta, that's why I don't I do a lot you. of stuff because I'm very like frugal too. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to spend money on that. It has this to make shit. sense to me. Everything has to make sense. Definitely. But I got to give you freestyle artists a lot of props because I don't know anybody who was popping off in, in, in the 80s and is still filling up clubs today. Like yeah. nobody else does that. Like no yeah, funk, and it's no not pop, only like no, 
No, yeah. no temptations. No, none, none of those fill up these clubs every single week. Every year after year. And it's not only clubs. We are doing arenas. We do arenas, arenas especially out here in the on the West Coast. We do And stadiums. you guys' rosters be crazy and insane. Like, you guys go, yeah. like, 20 deep and y'all, like, go out there. Yeah. That's yeah. unity, and man. We do like, I year. understand what y'all got as a family. You know, I understand yeah. that. Anything yeah. you're doing 20 plus years, 30 plus years together as a unit, yeah. That, that's the family. Y'all not even artists no more. Y'all just a freestyle family. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Me for me, it's been 30. This is 36 years for me. Mm. So it's, yeah, we're still going strong. I tell people, you know, and I hear all the chatter. I hear people say all this negative because there is a negative um, oh, yeah. group, or I call them a small community because. This freestyle thing and the artists that I work with, especially over here on the West Coast, is is huge. And we get along. We love each other. And we work hard year after year to make these shows happen. There's only a small group of people that's uh, pretty negative to say that it's all dead and it's not going anywhere and it's this, mm. that, and the other. But I always tell people, let me tell you something. No, let, you let, me, let me, let me uh, uh, give you a, a fact. We are doing better than we did in the 80s. I'm working more than I worked in the 80s. I'm working mm. on bigger venues than mm. I did in the 80s and the mm. 90s. It's mm. huge now. I'm making way more money. I mm. am making at least five times the money I made in the 80s. So wow. what's that? These yeah. are people that don't have the facts, that don't mm -hmm. know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. and they're just haters. And instead mm -hmm. of respecting the freestyle, uh, freestyle artists, instead of respecting us like, Hip hop artists respect the old older legends, the ones that paved the way for them and laid the foundation. They respect you. Don't hear them talking about Sugar Hill Gay. Listen, and let me saying tell you all something that kind too. of stuff. They I'll respect be seeing a their lot, artists. I've been seeing a lot of hip hop artists that are included in, in your venues. You know, like I've been to freestyle shows and seen Rod Beige. And yes, seen I love, Montel I'm doing Williams a show with Jordan. I'm doing a show with him coming up and Montel and Too mm -hmm. Short. I've been on shows with Too Short. Mm -hmm. Slick Rick. I mean, I've seen all right. these guys in there. That's right. And the reason why is because the fan base is the same, especially out here in the West Coast. Mm. The fans, they just love music and they just love the old school. Mm. So if you if you love a trainer, you're gonna love a Jody Watley because the music is very similar. You're gonna, you just love that music. You know what I'm saying? If you like mm -hmm. Montel Jordan, um, this is how we, it's, it's a jam. Mm -hmm. So why not put everybody together? It's music, the mm -hmm. fans love it. It's not like, oh, we only, to me, people who just wanna see only freestyle, they're, mm -hmm. to me, they're not versatile. They're just a little bit closed minded. And I understand people have their preferences, but, you know when you're in the car or if you're in the mall and you hear uh, a salt and pepper jam or you hear it too short, it's going to make you move. You're going to dance to it. It's not that it's mm -hmm. not your thing. You're going to you will bop your head to it. You're going to mm -hmm. jam to it. So I think everybody mm -hmm. just they just want to come out and hear good music. That's all. And so some of the Maybe. promoters are getting smart and bringing everybody together, bringing all the music just to expand that audience and make more money. <laughs> Listen, man, I'd have seen, I'd have seen Montel Jordan come out, come out with a slick Rick, super mega, super duper chain hanging mm -hmm. on with slick Rick. You know how slick Rick do, mm -hmm. how he be, I think he rents his jewelry. Yeah. You can come out and, and, and I seen him, you know, like doing his show, and, and it was a freestyle concert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sir yeah, that, a lot. Really all cool. of us. All, all. Yeah, we we do our name thing one together. rapper though. Name one rapper that that you done smashed back in the day. Oh, I haven't. No, you don't know. <laughs> as a, as as attractive you are, you bad boys, you ain't smashed no rappers. No. Oh, uh -uh. but I guess back no. then, like like rock and pop and funk was bigger than it wasn't. Than life. It wasn't. Okay, so I have been on shows with like um, LL Cool J. That was in the very beginning of my career, back in the 80s. Mm. LL, mm. Um, um, what's the other guy's name? Um, Houdini people, Houdini. Oh, okay, all right. Big Daddy Kane. Back then, those were the rappers. That mm. was pretty hot. Mm. And um, no, I just kind of, 
No, I just used to crush at a distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you was down with the <laughs> Mary Jane girls, you said? I was, I was. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's where we started. So when I was in, in college and in school at the University of Miami, when I was 15, I went to the, the Rick James concert. My mother let me take, um, take her car, but I had to be home before my dad came home from playing poker, right? Because I was 15, I only had a restricted license. So me and my girlfriend went to the Hollywood Sportatorium. I'll never forget it. We went there to see Rick James. And so I'm backstairs because really back then I was a, a serious groupie. <laughs> And I had my little my little tape, like a little demo tape of myself. And we went around to the backstage and, and um, we was behind this gate. And I saw this really tall musician. Uh, he was one of the Rick James musicians walking by. And so we yelled at him. We got his attention. He came over to the gate. You know, we, I gave him my tape. I said, oh, I love you guys. I would love to re meet Rick James. I would love to to sing with you guys, listen to my tape. You know, I was hustling back then. I was 15 years old. He took my tape. He actually took my tape and he said, hey, so, you know, you guys want to come over to the hotel, to the after party, you know, by the pool. We're having a after party by the pool. And I'm like, hey, you can meet. Rick. I said, can I meet Rick? He was like, yeah, I'll introduce you to Rick. So, of course, I'm going. So me and my girlfriend, her name was Lakita. One second, we're... one second, one second. We get back to Lakita. <laughs> I want to know what was on that tape. I want to know what was on that tape. Like it was like, the song that I had re recorded. An original was it cover? No, it was covers. Okay. No originals. It was covers. Just to pretty and, much. And how was the sample laid down? Like did you go to a studio or did you go to? No, one of I had like a little home thing. My dad uh -huh. bought me a little home studio set up that you could sing in. You put the tape in and you sing on top of it. So that's what I did. When got you. I was young. Got you. Legendary. Now let's get back to Lakita. Cool. Mm -hmm. So me and Lakita went. We uh, went back where the the pool was, where the party was, you know. And um, his name was Nate Hughes, and we are still. He actually lives here in Vegas. We're still great friends today. We've been friends for what since I was 15 years old. And um, so he introduced me to Rick. Of course, as soon as Rick was coming down, I started feeling kind of weird, like faint. As soon as he said, as soon as he said hello to me, I literally fell out on the floor. No way. <laughs> literally, like you fainted? Like I fainted. Wow. <gasps> I fainted. I was so I was so nervous and so excited. I just just fell out. And so And who girl, caught you, Lakita? Like she caught No, you, I like... fell, I fell on the what do you call it? You know, those uh, lounge chairs. Thank God. Mm. I fell on the lounge chair. And um, I guess a few minutes later, she, you know, I woke up and we still went up to meet him. And that was the most exciting thing. And so later, um, this was when I was 15. So once I graduated from high school, I went to, to the University of Miami, got a scholarship in the music school there. I'm rocking and rolling. A year or so passed. And then um, Nate called me and said, hey, it's an opening for the Mary Jane girls. You want, I'm like, oh my God, I would have to drop out of school. And here I am with a scholarship, music scholarship at the University of Miami. So of course, my dad was not happy. Um, but mm. my dad was very supportive. He was like, you know, and my parents, whatever you want to do, if that's what you feel you need to do, okay. He was hurt by it. But so I ended up having to leave school. I flew to, to uh, Buffalo, took a chance. Flew to Buffalo, auditioned, did my thing, started recording with them in the studios. And a lot of times I recorded without the full, all of the girls. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I stayed there for about a year. Oh, wow. I was living there with, with um, some musician friends of the Stone City Band with uh, Nate. Mm -hmm. And it was an experience. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yo, that, that's so one hell of experience. Out, I would be out at, at Rick's ranch and, you know, I just saw a lot of things. And so I didn't see You ever seen him naked? Long. You ever seen him naked? He yeah, just it was looked always, like, yeah, it was he always, looked like he just was walked around the house happening. naked everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It was always happening. It was always women yeah. there. And after a while, I just didn't get comfortable. I wasn't comfortable. And one day I just woke up and I said, you know what? I'm going home. You know, it, it, took, it took around almost a year. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I got to go home. So mm -hmm. I didn't even tell my parents that I was coming home. So I, um, mm -hmm. I went home and the very next day basically is 
when I met my producer. I was at a party the first night I went home. I was at this party. And um, that's when I met the owner of the record company that made um, When I Hear Music by Debbie Deb. When I hear music and look out weekend. So mm. I met him and he was like, oh, I heard you could sing. What was your name of the record company? Um, music specialist back then. That music was the record. 